Whether you have an employment, criminal, family, corporate, or personal injury matter, legal issues can be puzzling. The lawyers at Devery, Smith & Frank make all the pieces fit together. Welcome back to Real Estate 101. Today we're going to continue our discussion on family law and talk a little bit about should kids play a role in parents' divorce. And I'm pleased to be joined once again by John Schumann of Devery Smith Frank LLP. John, welcome back to the show. Good to be here again. All right, John. So I want to ask you, should kids have any say when it comes to two parents getting divorced? That's a really interesting question because for a long time, and even not up until that long ago, the thinking was that when parents get divorced, the kids should be completely uninvolved in the situation. They should be put to the side and not involved in the conflict, not involved in discussions, because the thought was all that would hurt them. But now there's a bit of a different thinking. It's becoming more accepted that when parents divorce, it has a big impact on children. And having them sort of off the sideline doesn't really help them. Some children want to be off the sideline, but some of them really want to have a say in what's going to happen in their life from then on. All right, now, why would a child even want to be involved in something so stressful like that? Well, it's a big change in a child's life. And so when a, a child sees his parents separating, and he's, maybe he's going to move, or she's going to move, or maybe she's not, maybe the, all the activities are going to change, the whole schedule is going to change, how life goes on is going to change. And some kids want to have a say in everything. And some kids just want to have a say whether they get to continue to go to ballet, right. whether they get to continue to swim, play baseball. Those are all important things to them. And they want to make sure those things keep going. So they may not want to say whether their parents stay together or not. They just may want to say, if you're going to split up, this is what I want in the situation. Okay, so how do children get their voices heard when it comes to these family law matters? Well, it depends on how the parents are proceeding and whether the parents are picked to do, th do things in a nasty adversarial way or whether they're trying to work things out. And they're being civil, yeah. Yeah. Because if the parents are being civil, then you know they can sit down and have a table or kitchen table conversation when they talk to the child and say this is what's going to happen and they listen to what the child says and hear what the child thinks is important. The upper from that is sometimes parents require a mediator to be involved and sometimes a parenting mediator to be involved. And when you have a parenting mediator involved, a person who's helping work out the schedule or work out the activities or the logistics of everything, often when that mediator is a social worker or psychologist and a number of lawyers, they want to speak to the child too because it's more of a three-way negotiation that way. It's not just what the parents want, but it's what the child wants that's important. Right. When you get even more into high conflict and you go into arbitration or to court, then you know the judge may want to hear from the child and have the child come to court and actually speak to the judge in chambers, out of chambers, or something along those lines. Okay, so do judges normally want to see children in court? Normally, judges don't want to see children in court. They would rather have the children outside the conflict because when a matter is in court, it means people are fighting and right. things are not nice. But, and that's the reason why judges for a long time said, we actually don't want to ever see a child, we want them as far away from the courtroom as possible. But things are changing a bit now and judges are hearing more and more that children are saying, well, why is all this going on and, and I'm not having any say? Yeah. And I've got something important to say. And when a child has something really important they want to say, not something that their parents want them to say, but something that child wants to make clear, and it's gets clear to a judge that that child has a real opinion on something, then often the judge does want to hear from the child. Okay, so are there any times when a judge would uh, need or must hear from a child in court? Yeah, there are times when judges have to hear from children in, in courtrooms. In criminal matters, the child is making a complaint of abuse, and it's uh, they're the accuser, right. or the, then the child has to appear in court, they have to testify. Also, with regard to some personal injury and other type of civil lawsuits, when it infects the child, the child has to show up in court and tell their story because it's that child's story that's important. In family matters, the child is not one of the parties, usually. It's the parents who are doing the back and forth. So it's not necessary for the child to be in court, but it is um, occasionally they will be heard in court if they are saying they ha the child is saying that they have, or he or she has a uh, a particular viewpoint that's not being expressed by either parent or the judge is concerned that neither parent is expressing the child's viewpoint and there aren't any other ways to get the child's views before the court. Okay, so does what a child wants, uh, does, does that decide the outcome of the case or can that sway uh, a judge's decision? That's a very important point to make. 
A, a child when they participate in court is not the decision maker, and is never the decision maker. A child in the court process, in a family court process, isn't even a party, which means it's not one of the people that's fighting. It's not, right. it's mom versus dad, it's not mom versus dad versus child. The child is basically a witness, and witnesses don't decide anything. And who decides at the end? That's the judge. The judge listens to mom, the judge listens to dad, the judge may listen to the child if, if there's no other way to get the child's views before the judge. And the judge will make up his or her own mind. And the judge will consider what does mom want, what does dad want, what does child want. But what the judge is really basing their decision on is what's in the child's best interest. And the judge's thoughts on what's in the child's best interest may be completely different from what mom, dad, or child want. Okay, so how does a judge decide uh, when it comes to parenting, custody, and access for, for children? Well, a judge just decides what's in the child's best interest. And what's in the child's best interest is actually defined. It's, it's a, a bit of a loosey-goosey type uh, concept, but there are certain things that the judge really does have to consider. So are there set parameters that, 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 that it needs to fall under in order to sway a judge's decision? Or? Well, there's certain factors a judge has to consider. Specifically, like the, the children's uh, connection with both parents. So if a child's really close to one parent and not so close to the other parent, that's an important factor the judge considers. Another important factor that the judge considers is the ability of the parents to parent. If one of the parents is a hopeless parent and the other parent's a good parent, then that has an obvious outcome. You know, the child's views are one thing the judge considers, but it's not the only thing the judge considers because it's different from who the child likes best, maybe different from which parent is best for the child. There may be a parent who is better at educating the child or ensuring the child has all the things the child needs to grow or is better giving the child guidance. And that's important to a judge as well. And it's equally important as to what the child wants. If the child has been exposed to any domestic violence, the judge is specifically required to consider that and what the impact that has had on the child. And the ch judge is also required to consider, among other things, is the, the plans the parents put forward. What the one parent that says they're gonna, you know, how they're going to parent the child, what the schedule is going to look like, where the, the child's going to live, what the school is going to be like, and what the other uh, um, parent is proposing. And when considering that, the judge considers the stability for the child and whether or not one of those plans or anything else is going to throw the child's life into turmoil because the judges want to avoid that. Yeah. And as far as is possible, the judge wants to keep the child's life as close to what it was like before the separation, after the separation. Okay, so. Is it wise for a parent to get a child to speak with the judge in order to support their decision or support their case? That's a really bad idea, in fact. Judges really, really hate it when a parent is trying to use the child as a pawn or a, or a soldier in the fight. The judge wants to hear from the child if the child has got their own views and their own concerns, but really does not want to hear from the child if the child is being put there to support a parent. It's, and judges look for this and every other professional that's involved with the family and separation of force is going to look for this because it's a big concern that a parent's going to try to get that child to like them better and move away from the other parent. Children need both parents and as long as it is a, a you know safe for them to have a relationship with both parents they benefit immensely from seeing both parents. So when one parent tries to put their, the child on their side and against the other parent courts, professionals, everyone view that very very negatively and if a parent is really trying very hard to push a parent away from the other child and have that child you know, fight for, that, for him or her, then that would be a reason why a judge would say the parent who's doing that to the child loses custody. Loses custody. Okay, so let's say a child, uh, he or she, doesn't want to see a mother or father for whatever reason anymore. Should the other parent understand uh, and respect that, that child's decision? Well, as I said before, there's a lot of social science research on this that says that it is really very beneficial for a child to have a, a relationship with both parents. both parents. Even if the child doesn't like one of the parents, it's very important for the child's sense of identity to know that other parent and know what they're rejecting that other parent and know how that, see that parent what they don't want to be as forming their identity. So it's very, very important for the child to see both parents. And the way most judges look at it and a lot of other professionals look at it is it's as important as the child any other part of the child's education or growing up is to see both parents 
So if that parent is not abusing the child and being actually like physically, sexually or very emotionally abusive, then it is important for the child to see the other parent. And it's important for both parents to recognize that. So it's a Judges often compare it to like going to school. So your role as a parent when your child says, I don't want to go see mom or I don't want to go see dad, is your role as a parent is, no, it's important for you to go, you're going to go. And do, I ha do you have to drag them kicking and screaming out of the, the door? Well, it depends on how old the child is and whether you can or not, because obviously older child, children you may not be able to. Right. But it is very important that you really support that child going to see the other parent. And even avoiding that kicking and screaming type situation by saying all the time that it's important for you to see your father, it's important for you to see your mother. And it's important to me that you see your father and your, and your, or your mother. Because that gives a child the impression that, you know, there's nothing to kick and scream about. Right. You know, a parent who doesn't do that, who, as I said, is not supportive, will find themselves in trouble. And saying the child does not want to go is not a, an excuse for a contempt motion for denying access. It's not going to get you out of trouble with the judge, and it could be a reason for changing custody. So it's not, not something you want to do. Now, as I said, when you get to have a 13, 14, 15 year old, or even older, teenagers, they're going to go where they're going to go, no. and they're going to live where they're going to live, and no. people realize that. And so again, it's just you being supportive of the other parent, but you know, forcing them to go maybe won't happen, but not being supportive will get you in a lot of trouble. All right, John, so do you have any last tips for divorcing parents um, to help their, their children go through something like this? Yeah, I've been doing this for a number of years, longer than it looks, apparently. And one of the things that uh, I've learned is that it's very, very, very rare for parents to come in and say, I don't care about my kids, I care about the money. What parents usually care about, no matter what else, is their kids first. And sometimes what they think they're, they're putting their kids first is really putting themselves first. So it's really important that parents try very hard to see things from their child's perspective. And sometimes that can be very difficult when you're in, the, in emotional, emotional turmoil. So it can be very helpful to get a professional, a child psychologist or a social worker to help you see things from your child's perspective because that's the most important thing. Because when you can see things from your child's perspective, you can see the things that are going on in, uh, in their life and how they're viewing things. And how they're, they, they're being affected by it. That's right. There was a, a conference I was at where they played a video by a band called Ever, uh, Everclear, a hard rock band, and it talks about uh, um, how, how a child goes through the divorce process, because one of the band members went through it. And all these parents start to cry because it starts off with the child saying, I want them to be the way they were. And the child gets angrier and angrier, which is how the hard rock comes in at the end. And the child's like really screaming, like no one's listening to me. No one cares about what I want anymore. This is really hurting me. And the parents who saw that said, oh, I had no idea what I was going, was going on. So it's important to avoid that for your child. It's important to put them first and make sure that you're putting them first, not yourself not first. Yourself, yeah. Putting their activities first, putting their needs first, putting their school first, putting them seeing professional first. You have to really try very hard to see things from their perspective and ignore your own perspective. All right, John, I want to thank you for coming on today's show. You brought a lot of uh, good information. It was a good topic we talked about today. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next month. Glad to be able to be here and talk about this important topic. If you're going through a divorce and you need the help of a top family lawyer, somebody that cares, contact John Schumann at Devery Smith Frank LLP. I'm your host, Joe Tracera. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.